Hello friends, Scrubbin' Time here. Have you ever picked up a book and become engrossed in a story so intriguing that you feel yourself transcend time and space and immersed within the world your favorite author has eloquently crafted for your reading pleasure? There are some stories so epic that they are etched into the skies. Constellations not only had a practical purpose for tracking seasons and coordinates, but thanks to second century astronomer Ptolemy, they also told rich stories from ancient mythology. Here are a few of the famous constellations and the stories behind them. Aquarius is one of the oldest documented constellations. It's also one of the largest. Despite its size, it can be difficult to see with the naked eye, as there are no particularly bright stars that stand out. Aquarius is located near the other water-related constellations in what is referred to as a sea section of the sky. The name Aquarius means cupbearer in Latin. In Greek mythology, the constellation represents Ganymede, a handsome young man who was the object of Zeus's affection. According to lore, he was brought to Mount Olympus where he served as cupbearer to the gods and was granted eternal youth. The constellation Aquarius can be seen in the spring in the southern hemisphere and the fall in the northern hemisphere. This next story is seeped in a tale of revenge and might. This story is represented by the constellation Cancer, meaning crab in Latin. It is one of the dimmest constellations and lies between Leo and Gemini. The constellation is a dim upside down Y often considered to represent a giant crab lurking in the night sky. One of its stars, Acubens, translates to the claw. Cancer, the Latin word for crab, does not represent just any scuttling sea creature, but rather a monster from Greek mythology that went toe to toe, or rather claw to claw, with Hercules himself. Hercules had to suffer 12 labors as punishment for killing his family. The second of those labors was not to do battle with the crab, but rather the water serpent Hydra. However, the goddess Hera, enraged and jealous, sent Cancer to fight alongside Hydra to make the fight even more difficult for the demigod. Her attempts to thwart Hercules were in vain, as Hercules was able to defeat Cancer with his club before turning his attention to Hydra. Hera placed Cancer's body in the night sky as a reward for its efforts in stopping Hercules. However, since the giant crab was so easily defeated by Hercules, Hera wanted to make sure it wasn't too impressive of a reward. So she put Cancer in a dim part of the sky, so it would struggle to be seen. Cancer is visible in the northern hemisphere in the early spring. It can be seen in the southern hemisphere during autumn. The constellation Taurus, also known as the Bull, is one of the oldest and most recognizable constellations and is most famous for its giant red star called Aldebaran. It forms the Bull's right eye and is the brightest star in the constellation as well as the 14th brightest star in the sky. In Greek mythology, there are several stories involving the bull. In the most famous, Zeus transformed himself into a white bull with golden horns named Taurus after he fell in love with the Phoenician princess Europa. He used a disguise to carry Europa away to Crete on his back. The Taurus constellation is fairly easy to find due to its bright outer barren star and the prominent V shape which represents the head and horns of the bull. In the northern hemisphere, the bull charges through the sky from November to March but the constellation is at its most visible in January. Did you know that the Big Dipper is not a constellation? It's actually an asterism, which is a prominent pattern or group of stars, typically having a popular name, but smaller than a constellation. It can be found in the constellation Ursa Major, always visible in the Northern Hemisphere. It's one of the most recognized star patterns. Its name in Latin means greater bear or she bear. As the Greek myth goes, Zeus fell in love with a young nymph named Callisto. Hera, Zeus's wife, was jealous and transformed Callisto into a bear. While she was in animal form, she came across her son Arcus, but he didn't recognize the bear as his mother and he tried to shoot her. Zeus intervened and turned Arcus into a bear as well. He placed Callisto, which is Ursa Major, and her son, Ursa Minor, permanently into the night sky. Ursa Minor, meaning lesser bear in Latin, represents Callisto's son Arcus in Greek mythology. Ursa Minor, also known as the Little Dipper, is famous for containing Polaris, the North Star. The constellation is visualized as a baby bear with an unusually long tail. It can be distinguished from the Big Dipper not only by its smaller size, but by the upturned curvature of the tail. Like Ursa Major, this constellation is visible all year round. 
when you found the North Star at the end of the bear's tail, it's then easy to identify the rest of the constellation. The next constellation, Pegasus, is one of the most prominent constellations in the northern sky. It was listed by the astronomer Ptolemy during the second century and was named after a winged horse in Greek mythology. The brightest star in the constellation is Epsilon Pegasi, which forms the creature's nose. Pegasus belonged to Poseidon, the god of the sea, earthquakes, and storms. In a battle between Perseus and Medusa, Perseus decapitated her, and the winged horse sprang from her blood. Pegasus was stolen by the Greek hero Bellerophon with the help of Athena and Poseidon. Pegasus allowed Bellerophon to ride him in order to defeat the monstrous Chimera. However, Bellerophon later fell from the creature's back while trying to reach Mount Olympus. After some time, the riderless Pegasus reached Olympus, and Zeus transformed him into the famous constellation. Pegasus was also known for bringing thunder and lightning to Zeus whenever he needed it. In the northern hemisphere, the Pegasus constellation can be found high in the sky from the end of summer through autumn. If you are below the equator, look for Pegasus from late winter until spring. The Orion constellation is named after Orion the Hunter in Greek mythology. Located on the celestial equator and made up of bright young blue giants, or supergiants, it is one of the most prominent and recognizable constellations in the sky and can be seen throughout the world. According to mythology, Orion was a supernaturally gifted hunter who was the son of Poseidon. He proclaimed himself as the greatest hunter in the world. This angered Hera, the wife of Zeus, who had a scorpion kill him. This later became the constellation Scorpius. Out of compassion, Zeus put Orion into the sky. Orion is clearly visible in the night sky from November to February. It can be found in the southwestern sky if you are in the northern hemisphere, or the northwestern sky if you are in the southern hemisphere. While these fantastical stories are great at lighting up the curious mind with images of grandeur and daring adventures, constellations also serve a practical purpose. Farmers were the first to use the constellations. In some areas, the changing of seasons was so subtle that farmers depended on the stars to know when it was time to plant and when it was time to harvest. Before fancy navigational equipment on seafaring ships, the stars were used to pinpoint their locations. Polaris, the North Star, and Ursa Minor, the Little Dipper constellation, were used to figure out latitude, north and south, by how high Polaris was in the sky. Whether for navigation, mythical stories of fantastic creatures, or just for viewing pleasure, constellations will continue to bedazzle stargazers for centuries to come. If I've learned one thing today, don't get on Hera's bad side.